Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to go through the budget app project for Python. And it's under the Scientific Computing with Python certification for the Python projects. And also, uh, Free Code Camp must have updated their website lately because it looks a lot different, probably for the better. And we just want to go to the budget app. I already completed it, but I'm going to kind of walk everyone through this, how to do it. So we can just access the full project description and starter code on REPL. So that's what I'm going to do. And it opens up the assignment with the readme where we have to complete a category class in budget.py. And it needs these methods, deposit, withdraw, get balance, transfer, check funds. And then outside of the method, it needs a create spend chart, which will make a spend chart that looks like this. A little annoying because there's a bunch of spaces and stuff in this. So, but yeah, I was a little bit confused with this at first, so I might as well go through it. So in the main.py, we create a category called food. So that's the food category. And then we can add like a deposit to that category of $1,000, I guess. I don't know what kind of currency it would be, but I'm guessing dollars. And then we buy groceries with it and we buy food from a restaurant with it and then we can get, get its balance. So it'd be a thousand minus these two would be the balance. And then we can make another category of clothing. So there would be $50 for clothing and we withdraw these. Here it would probably throw an error because we don't have $100 to withdraw. Or actually, actually it's saying food debt transfer. So it's transferring $50 to the clothing category, which I guess is kind of like a deposit. But yeah, then we have this other category called auto and where we deposit a thousand and withdraw 15. And then we can print these out and it should make something like this. So like for food, if you printed it out, it would look like this. We bought groceries, which was 1015. We bought food uh, from a restaurant, which was 15.89. And then transfer to clothing was 50. And then it gives us our total at the end. And we need to be able to do this for the food and the clothing categories um, just by printing it. So that's where we go into budget.py and we have to actually make this class. So here's the class, class category. This uh, create spend chart is actually outside of the class and I'm just gonna return none for, for now because I don't know why it's yelling at me. Either that or just uh, put it on top of the class. That should work too. There, now it's not barking, just down here. Yeah, first thing in any class is we need a init function which will initialize the, the object kind of. So what we have to do is we have to do def underscore underscore init self it kind of showed up there self and then we pass in a name of the category as well and then we say self.name equals name and we say self.ledger equals a list so basically when we make a category so like in this main.py when we make the category food then it's self.name becomes food and it also makes a ledger for that for that category as well. Next thing we have to do is we have to make a deposit method. So we'll do def deposit and it's gonna take in a self, it's gonna take in amount and description. Description is gonna equal an empty string by default. And then we can add some documentation by doing triple um, apostrophes or triple quotations, I mean. And then we can say what it's supposed to do. And then it also shows up like when you hover over the method. So here we have the deposit method accepts an amount and description. If no description is given, it should default to an empty string, like we did. The method should append an object to the ledger list in the form of amount and description. So not too bad here. All you have to do is do self.ledger.append, and then it's going to append this object of the amount and description, and it returns none um, just because why not. I probably don't even need this here, but I kept it there so that it would... Uh... Actually, I don't, I don't need this here. All right. Next method is the withdraw method, and it takes in a self, amount, and description as well, set to an empty string by default. And what this one will do is it's similar to the deposit method, but it will be a negative number in the ledger instead of positive. And also, if there's not enough funds, then nothing will be added to the ledger. And if it should return true if the withdrawal took place. So here we do self.check funds. We don't have that method yet, but we will. It's this one down here. And that will just check that we have the right amount of funds to be able to withdraw from our account. So the next one is get balance, def get balance. And all this one has is self. And all we have to do is we have to add up 
all the items in the category and return the balance of it. So, so we have our total cash equals zero. And then for each item in the self.ledger, our total cash is going to add up all the amounts of every item and then return it. So that one's pretty easy as well. There might even be a method to make this easier, but I just went with this. Next up, we have this transfer method. The transfer method accepts an amount and another budget category as arguments. So we're gonna transfer this amount to this category. So what we have to do is we have to withdraw from one account and transfer it to another, or we have to withdraw from this category and we have to transfer it to a different category. So the category that's passed in as the argument to this function. And then we have to deposit it into that category. And then we also have this string here just to describe what's going on. See, we use the withdraw and the deposit method from before, which will add it to the ledger. Next up, we have the check funds method. And the check funds method is the one that we used up here, where we just check if we have enough funds, and we also use it for the transfer. And basically it's saying self.getBalance, if that's greater than or equal to the amount that is passed in, then we return true. We do have enough money to make this to make this transaction. Otherwise return false if we don't have enough money. So let's see what this gives us and let's run it. So here we have some indentation errors it looks like. I don't need that. Might have to tab this over one more. Either that or it's just something with REPL being weird or it's because there's only one space from here. Okay, I don't know why this is giving an error. Okay, maybe if I just refresh. No, the error is still there. Hmm. Okay, there might have been like a space here or something. Maybe that's why. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Now it's gone. Now let's run it, see what it gives us. Okay, so it ran the tests and it failed two of them. But it looks like it actually did the rest of them all right. Now we just have to be able to spit this out as a string. And that's done with a string method that's built into Python. So like this init function is the constructor for this class, for this object. And there's also a built-in like to string method. And the signature for that one is just um, def underscore string underscore self. And then basically here, like if we do print, whatever we return here is what it will print out. So if I just did return, this is the category string, and I ran this, then it will print out this is the category string when we print it out right here. So like print food, print clothing, that's what it's printing out. What we want to print out is something that looks like this. So we have to do some stuff to make it look like that. And I'm pretty sure I may have copied this from somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's just uh, this right here, where we make a bunch of these stars. And then we have our items and our total. And now when I run it, we get our food and we get uh, the perfect print format for this for, so that it passes that test. And now we only have one failure because we need to make the create spend chart thing, which is this one up here. We still have to do this function. But yeah, not really sure what all this means, but hey, somehow it works. I know what this means. We get the item description. We get the item description and we format it and we get the item amount and we format that and then we do a new line and then at the end we have the total uh, which is adding up all the amounts of the items and then outputting it at the end as total so that's how we get that next up this create spend chart is pretty uh pretty wild like it's kind of a challenge to format a string in this style and have it be perfectly exact by free code camp standards or at least their tests. So I'm pretty sure I got this from the uh, Free Code Camp forum as well, because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really want to do everything by scratch. So the first thing that they did was they added a function at the bottom of this category class. So still within the category class, they put this function called get withdrawals. And basically what this does is it just adds up our the amount that we spent in each category because withdrawing is spending and yeah it just gets the withdrawals so if the item amount is less than zero that's counted as a withdrawal since our amount went down or our balance went down and yeah it just gets that for that category and then we make it with this huge function yeah it's pretty uh pretty wild okay create spend chart should return a string that is a bar chart like this, right? We need another function called get totals and also truncate, I think. But these two can go up here. We have this get totals 
which will it will get our all of our withdrawals with the get withdrawals method and then it uses this lambda x function so think of the map as a list.map in in javascript and then we the lambda x is the variable that it's looping through so x would be one of the items in the list and it's in the breakdown list as the second argument and we truncate x and total so that it has the correct rounding i'm guessing that's why they do it like this and then we're able to make this spend chart by doing a bunch of while loops and for loops <laughs> and adding in spaces everywhere and yeah it's pretty pretty much magic how this works so let's run it see what it gives us and look at that it looks amazing isn't that crazy? But yeah, I just basically copy and pasted this, so <laughs> I don't expect you to come up with this on your own, but I mean, if, if you want to, if you want to challenge, you can try and come up with this on your own. It's uh, pretty tough. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, this whole thing. Or actually, it still failed. Let's see what it failed. Line 62, none does not equal false. Check funds. Oh, for some reason, I got rid of false here. Check funds should return true and return false. Okay, now it should work. Yep. Now it ran the 11 tests and they're okay. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, I was a little bit confused at first in this project because it's kind of unclear. Well, I don't know. Like reading this again, it makes it more clear of what to do. Like it should be a class with these methods in it that should do some task in the function or in the, in the class, but it's kind of hard to know that right off the bat and like we should have a variable called ledger that's a list in it but we don't like know exactly where to put it so hopefully this helps out with that that we put the ledger in in the init function which is the constructor and we also have the name of it as well and then yeah hopefully i hopefully explain this well enough but yeah this is the budget app project for a free code camp once you're done all you have to do is take this uh repl link and go to free code camp and then scientific computing projects budget app and you just paste in the solution link that you have and then submit and go to next challenge so i might as well do that and it will just move on it doesn't really like test it i, I think like you could put any link in there and it would still work so but whatever at least it like lights up the dot so <laughs> it shows that you're done next up we have a polygon area calculator and i may have started it i don't know this polygon one is pretty tough, I think. So yeah, a little taste of this polygon area calculator is if we do this, then it should return a rectangle with a 10 height of three and it prints out like 10 stars in a row with three height. Or if it's square side four, then it does four stars and four height for those. And it gives us the area that it has and the perimeter, is that what it is? Yeah, it does get area get perimeter and then get picture as well okay yeah this is what we have next so yeah i'll see you next time make sure to subscribe like the video comment down below i read all the comments so whatever you put down there i will for sure read and uh, yeah i'll see you next time see ya